So we're already in May of 2023 and I wanted to give you guys kind of an updated list of my most worn, most comfortable sneakers that I'm wearing right now for 2023. So let's go ahead and get into it. There's a top 10 that I wanted to feature. However, there were no particular order of my least favorite to most favorite. These are the ones that are typically in my garage and in constant rotation. So I figured I'd do a list for you guys. And if you guys like this video, please uh, drop a like at the end of the video. And if you guys wanna buy any of the shoes that I'm talking about in the video, check the links in the description of the video. And if you guys make a purchase with any of my links, I actually do get a little bit of a kickback and it lets the brands know that you guys rock with the channel which I always greatly appreciate it so the first shoe that i wanted to mention is the latest and greatest from new balance in the lifestyle line that is the 990 v6 so this is not like a typical comfort sneaker that i would normally mention on this channel at least for comfort a lot of people though that wear this shoe and have never tried any of the other shoes that i'm going to be mentioning they they know that this is like a really really comfortable pair so this is the latest and greatest version this does feature fuel cell in the midsole so it's nice and soft in the midsole here. Uh, so it's probably the softest version of a 990 that we've ever actually had. The upper is mesh and suede and it's a really nice build. Also they have extra wide versions of this shoe. In fact, I had one wide version originally and then I ended up gifting it to uh, some family because it was just a little bit too wide for myself. So I ended up getting the regular pair and this one fits me perfect. And these ones get a lot of rotation uh, because of it and super comfortable. And this is just like the one I throw on if I want something not overly soft, squishy. I just wanna run some errands or just walk around and stuff. This is definitely a really solid option and pretty stylish looking one in my opinion too, being a 990 series. I think this is the most expensive one on my list though. Uh, these ones come in at about $200, so kind of expensive, but definitely worth it if you want something like durable, like the latest and greatest from New Balance. And also this is probably the firmest, most stable version of anything that I'm gonna be showing you guys. Also, they do have a black version of this shoe now out. Uh, that is really really nice looking so throwing that out there if you guys are interested link in the description next up we have another pair that i was sent over from uh somebody that works over at on these are the on cloud monsters because i did a review on a different pair of ons and they're definitely firm on feet you think on cloud and you think it's going to be soft and squishy and that's not the case with the on cloud uh, for the most part that doesn't mean it's not a comfortable shoe and that doesn't mean it's a, not a good pair of footwear for your feet and actually i wear the on clouds um honestly in the garage running on the treadmill and stuff. I like a little bit of a firmer feel underfoot when I'm actually running on the treadmill. This is an on cloud monster though and the midsole on this is a lot bigger, a lot squishier on feet and overall feel is really, really good. This is definitely like the most comfortable version of the on uh, series that I've tried on. However, I've seen that they do have some new ones on the market that I probably need to check out. Uh, but these are pretty lightweight as well. And then you do have some large hexagon shapes on the midsole of the shoe that you can literally see right through. But the overall heel toe transition in these are actually pretty good as well. And the upper is pretty simplistic. It's like an engineered mesh upper here with a little bit of fused panels and stuff. The tongue is fixed or gusseted so it doesn't like wobble around too much. And because of that, it has a really nice fit on feet. Uh, these are true to size for myself. Actually, all of the shoes that I'm gonna be mentioning are, are pretty much true to size in the countdown. But anyway, this is a, a really nice option if you want something comfortable. And because it is a, like a lot plusher than some of the previous stuff out there that I've tried, this is definitely one that just gets in rotation more often than not. Next up, we have a pair of New Balance and this is the 1080 Permafrost version. It's basically the same midsole as the 1080 V12, however. Uh, but this is a really comfortable pair and I threw this one in the mix specifically because it is the Permafrost version, meaning it is a little bit like water water resistant but it's not waterproof if you will so it's not as waterproof as some of the other options that I'm going to be showing you. However, this is one of those shoes that I can wear and then take the kids to like baseball and stuff. If it's not a wet day, it's a pair that I'll be wearing around in the grass and stuff. So baseball, soccer, outdoor activities, this is one where I was like, okay, I can wear these and it definitely protects my foot a little bit better than some of the rest of the options on the countdown with one as the exception. Uh, but anyway, it's a comfortable shoe though. I love the 1080 line. It's one of my favorite uh, pairs of New Balances. In fact, it's the one that got me turned onto the New Balance scene completely because of that 1080. 1080 V10 like a handful of years ago. So the 1080 V12 is a great model. I do have the regular 1080 V12s as well as the slip-ons and then these ones. But these ones get the most shine for me right now because uh, just in Oregon, it's definitely a lot of rain and stuff. So it's something that I like to be able to put on with uh, the grass. You know, you just never know if it's going to be uh, nice or not. So got a lot of wear on these ones uh, quite a bit. And honestly, I actually wear these when I'm running on the treadmill as well in the garage. I don't do any crazy runs, but I've been trying to get into it again uh, and until I'm outside running on the road again, um, then, you know, the treadmill is where it's at. And I've been wearing these and some of my ons and some of the other options out here as well. If you've never tried a pair of 1080s, they're super nice. I usually get the wide versions of the regular pairs. However, it's not necessarily needed. I don't have that extreme of a wide foot. 
uh, but overall very comfortable and true to size for anybody looking. Now, while we're talking about New Balance and waterproof sneakers, this is kind of the one that I go to on a regular basis, especially in the springtime. If it's gonna be like winter time or fall, I'm definitely going the Terex Free Hiker Gore-Tex version, which I've done videos on as well. Amazing pair of boots, sneaker boots. But if I'm wanting something that's more of a sneaker, uh, which is most of the days, like this is the one that I go to, especially with that fresh morning dew on like the soccer fields or the baseball fields or anything. Like this is a really good option for those people looking. If you've never tried these, I mean, this is like a better version in my opinion to like a Pegasus Trail or something like that. I've I've tried the Pegasus Trails, wasn't as good as this shoe in my opinion. This is Gore-Tex on the upper. It doesn't look like it's water resistant, but it is water resistant. I've sprayed the hose on these things. Water doesn't get through. It's really a great uh, option for your feet. And then you do have that Fresh Foam X midsole that's super comfortable as well. So it's the most comfortable shoe version of a trail shoe that you could wear out and about. And I've worn these a ton, got them really, really dirty. In fact, I wore these on hikes and stuff and trails. I actually wore these to the beach, on the beach even. Like, it's just one of those shoes that I've beat up and worn a lot. And I was thinking about this video of the most worn sneakers and the ones that like are in constant rotation and most comfortable. Like, this is one of the ones that goes to the forefront of my list because it is so functional, especially in Oregon where it's so wet. Uh, right now or it's been so wet through the last uh, handful of months so great option great pair of sneakers really comfortable and uh, get your money's worth with waterproof Gore-Tex on this one I believe the price point is like 150 or 160 on these too it's really worth it if you have any conditions similar to what I have with all the rain and stuff out there now another one I wanted to mention that gets a ton of rotation right now on my feet and this, this is the ultra boost light a lot of people are like on the fence on this model. Yeah, it's, it looks very similar to the 21s and 22s. And is it really that light? There's a lot of lighter models on the market. It is the best like performance, like running sneaker for uh, an Adidas Ultra Boost line in my opinion. And I'm speaking specifically from something that's not a runner, but I can understand why this is the one where people are like, okay, uh, it's really, really decent for running. And actually this is the other pair that I run on the treadmill with. Uh, it's really easy going. And I love the heel toe transition of this shoe as I've, touted since the Ultra Boost 21s. Because of that LEP system, it's a really nice heel toe transition. It's not the softest and squishiest thing on the market. The light boost is not crazy, crazy soft and squishy comparison to the regular boost. But overall, it's a form fitting shoe, something that you can wear on your feet that feels like it's an enhancement to your foot and not something where it's like compensating for cushioning. It's interesting because you'd think that it would be overly cushioned and stuff, but it's actually something that it feels really, really good on foot. And it's something that I enjoy the feel on feet. I guess you could say it kind of has like a sock-like fit, obviously, because of the upper is a little bit snug, which is usually not my preference because this is so snug here. However, when you put them on, because it is a little bit snugger uh, across the top of your shoe, it gives you more stability in the midsole of the shoe so you don't feel as wobbly left or right or anything like that. And so the stability is pretty good in these things as well. But overall, it's a breathable pair of shoes. It's something that I like to wear on a regular basis. And it's something that gets quite a bit of wear on my feet and I never regret it anytime I put these on feet with the exception if I'm going in the grass or something like that and it's wet because obviously it's not water resistant I'm sure they will have a like Gore-Tex version of the Ultra Boost Lite hopefully in the future and when that drops I'll definitely be buying a pair because I always love the Gore-Tex versions of the Ultra Boost uh, as I've done reviews on the channel in the past and quite a few of the pairs and it's something I really appreciate. Now moving on to another pair of New Balance they have a lot of shoes on this countdown but they get a lot of rotation and a lot of love on my feet. This is the Fuel Cell Rubble V3 the third version of the Fuel Cell line. It's really lightweight. If you want something soft and squishy on feet that has like not a huge mass stack like of height, this is a really good option, something that feels really good. It's a really breathable shoe, and I think this is one of the cheaper models out here, but you get a lot of bang for your buck with the New Balance Fuel Cell line. If you didn't know, Fuel Cell is softer and squishier, and it has more spring back because they want the responsiveness of the Fuel Cell. However, the Fresh Foam line is supposed to be more for impact, so it absorbs your foot as you take steps and stuff versus the bounce back of the Fuel Cell. So it's definitely a snappy feel on feet. Uh, this is gonna be a quick running shoe if you're trying to get a quick run in as well. But overall, it's a really comfortable pair. It is a little bit unstable because of how soft and squishy this midsole is. So just throwing that out there, it's not a one-stop shop for some people because it might be too soft for your feet. Uh, but it's it's incredible. I love the soft feeling of these on feet personally. And it's a great uh, pair to be throwing in the rotation. Now next up, we have the Asics Gel Nimbus 25. And honestly, uh, this is a, another one of those shoes where it's like, which pair, and I'm looking down the line, I'm like, okay, I'm doing these ones real quick. It's it's one that's really easy to choose to wear. If you want something well cushioned and comfortable on foot, 
this is a really nice option. Obviously the heel stack is huge. You have pure gel in here, but that's not where the crazy cushioning comes in. The pure gel is actually in the middle of the uh, midsole. What the midsole is made out of is the FF Blast Plus, which is the Flight Foam Blast Plus, which is the latest and greatest version of the ASICS uh, foam line. And if you've tried FF Blast in the past, it is not as good as this. The Blast Plus is definitely softer on feet. The upper is nice, the construction, the feeling on the collar is really good, the tongue, feels really good as well. Like all in all, it's just one of those shoes that you put on and you go, dude, these are really good. It's kind of like in line of the Hoka series in my mind, but a softer version and a more comfortable version than like a Hoka Clifton 9 for an example, which honestly Hoka Clifton could be in this countdown as well, but I just don't wear them as much as I should. They are really, really comfortable though, but I, I actually would go with these over the Hoka Clifton series in general. And overall, amazing, amazing shoe. Uh, very impressed with what ASICS is doing. And I wear these over all of the other ASICS that have been released that are all very comfortable as well that I've tried on the channel. These are the ones to give a go if you haven't tried them yet. If you want something crazy comfortable, this is a max cushion shoe for sure. So you're looking for a big cushion stack. Uh, this is the one. And again, I want true to size. Next on the countdown, you already know that the Nike Invincible Run 3s are going to be on my list. Now, you can go with the Invincible 1, 2 as well. Both of those are incredible. Also, in fact, I actually like those a little bit better than the third version. However, the third version is really comfortable. In fact, I did a comparison video between these and the previous versions. If you guys want to see that video, uh, check out my channel. Or just search YouTube and then type in Hess Kicks and my video should pop up. But uh, a really comfortable pair. I don't really love the upper on this model, to be 100% honest. But the midsole is really nice on here. It's a very comfortable pair of shoes. Obviously, the biggest, most comfortable like stack of cushioning that you can get from a Nike running sneaker in my mind, other than probably the Alpha Flies, which is probably bigger and softer. However, I haven't really tried the newer versions because my experience from the older ones is there's just too much heel toe transition that's like like hinging on the toe like it feels like too much of a runner specific shoe which is exactly what it is which is why they are really smart for creating something like this for your feet for the common folk and uh this is a, a good one man it's definitely one of the ones that is worth trying if you love nike you don't want to try any of the other brands this is the one that is the most comfortable from Nike and it's the one I highly recommend if you want max cushion comfort on your feet, something where it's like recovery on your feet. If you're wearing Air Jordans all day and your feet are hurting you and you want something comfortable for the next day, uh, these are like are definitely a go-to. It's a really nice, soft, easy ride. It basically feels like wearing sweatpants like everywhere, like that sort of vibe, you know what I'm saying? Like when you're going to the grocery store, uh, just really comfortable, really relaxed. So any which way, this is on the countdown as well. If you haven't tried them, again, link in the description to these and any of the other items on the list. All right, moving on, we have another one, Tried and Chew, one of my favorites. This is the Fuel Cell Super Comp Trainers. Don't love the name of these things, but the overall comfort and feel on these things are amazing. It was like game changing when I tried these on for the very first time. The midsole is massive. You have a huge stack of fuel cell. You have an energy arc in the middle, which does give you a little bit of nice heel toe transition. However, it's not so ridiculous that it feels like you're rocking off your toes and it feels really awkward. It's actually a perfect complement to the fuel cell. If you want a very breathable pair of sneakers, I would say this is probably the most breathable one out of all of them on the countdown. So great option for that. Great option for max cushion comfort. Uh, overall, like I can't say enough good things about this model. I did get a wide version again for myself, but they do fit true to size in my opinion with the wide version. And overall, just a pair that I've completely like beat up. In fact, I still want to get another uh, pair of these. I'm just kind of waiting to see if they come up with a new version or not. But uh, amazing shoe. I've said a lot about this shoe in the past. It's made number one spots on my countdown for comfort in the past, and it definitely is a top three contender any time of the year against all the other shoes out here. It's preferable on my feet over the Invincible Runs just because uh, it is a little bit softer on feet. And I personally like that feel. The overall sensation on feet is, is unbelievably good. You can see on the on feet videos, the crazy heel squish on this thing is, is absolutely nuts. Love, love, love this shoe. And definitely worth the price in my opinion if you try them out. All right, the last one I wanted to mention is the newest one to the list. And we have the Explorer Boost from Adidas. And this is one of those shoes that, this is another reason why I wanted to do this countdown. I've worn these so much and I had them for such a short period of time. I honestly didn't expect anything when I got the shoes. I was like, cool, another Adidas Boost model. I'm sure it's okay. But as soon as I put them on fit, I was like, dude, these are legit comfortable. They kind of remind you of these guys right here, the Invincible Runs, and they're not as soft as, say, these are on feet, but they're really soft on feet. And for a pair of Adidas Boost sneakers, I was like, it feels like softer Boost in here than on the average pair. These are much softer on feet than the Ultra Boost Lights. So if you're looking for soft, squishy, and the lights are not soft and squishy enough for you, give these a go. These remind me of the EQT line back in the day. Like, so it really is like something that is really soft and squishy on feet. I also like the overall fit of the upper as well. 
like for the Ultra Boost Lite, I really enjoy this shoe, but it's a snugger fit across the top arc of my foot. And on this shoe, it has the same sort of structure as the Adidas Ultra Boost original pairs, where it's kind of formed here at the top, and so you could just slide the shoe on. Passes the no hands test, I can just throw these on feet using no hands and I'm good to go. I love the overall look of the shoe, actually. At first, I didn't think I like it, uh, but on feet, I think that it transforms the shoe. When you loosen up the laces, it makes it look a little bit more relaxed. And then the upper material is pretty stretchy as well. But ultimately, the star of the show is this midsole. It's very soft, very comfortable. And then you have a nice traction pattern on the bottom of the shoe. But surprisingly, I was like, this is one of those shoes that I'm wearing all the time. It's heavier than most of the other shoes out here. But honestly, like, I don't really notice the weight of the shoe on feet. I just notice it's comfortable as soon as I put it on. And I feel good wearing them, so I wear them over and over again and they're the ones that definitely get the most rotation in my feet as of right now the price point is a little bit expensive i did post them on sale when they came on sale a while ago and i'll post them again over on collective kicks if you guys don't follow it it's always linked in the description and if you bookmark that page and just refresh uh, i always try to update that page like once a week or so again if you guys want to buy any of the pairs that i've shown you guys in this video if you use my links in the description it does uh, benefit the channel quite a bit and it does help support me and my family and everything else uh, when you guys do that so it's always greatly appreciated when you do that hopefully you guys found this video somewhat informative and, and leave a comment in the comment section what shoes do you have that gets constant rotation on your feet um, curious to see what comfort sneakers you guys are, are rocking with if any of these are on your list as well uh, or what other ones you guys uh, have but have a good one thank you guys for stopping by and watching and again if you guys like the video please drop a like and subscribe and hopefully we'll see you back on the channel for some more content soon all right peace guys